Welcome back to another edition of Flight Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to tie, start with a dry fly. And this is probably, in my opinion, the most effective dry fly that you can, that you can use. It is also one of the simplest flies that you'll ever tie. And this is why I usually uh, teach this fly as the first dry fly that I that I teach. So, and this is the Griffiths Nat. I know if you go through my playlists, you'll see the Griffiths Nat a few times on there. And one of the reasons is because it's so good. But we're going to give you the beginner version on this. And we're going to start the materials that we're going to need is very simple we're going to need two materials and your thread this is peacock hurl and also a grizzly hackle that is all you're going to need and then black thread and i'm i have a eight dot black thread here Now the hook that I'm using, I'm using the Lively Legs Lip Splitter. This is a 305 size 14 and it is a barbless and it is also, if you look at it, has a bit of a larger gap. But this is a standard length dry fly hook and you can tie these on a little bit of a longer hook too, like a one extra long. But anyway, the amount of large fish that I've caught on this is I can't even explain how good it is phenomenal one of my old fishing friends uh, used to say I was cheating when I was using this fly he said he would say match the hatch and you're cheating with that Griffiths and that so he called it the cheater fly that's how good it is so anyway I'm going to use the black thread. I'm going to put a base of thread down. We'll start behind the eye. And, whoop, I just messed that all up. Let me try again. Let me start behind the eye and we're bringing the thread back to the end of the flat. We're going to keep that thread at the 45 degree angle so that we can get the nice touching turns. And we're going to bring that back just to the end of the flat there. Just a little bit past the point on this particular hook. Our first material we're going to put on is the peacock curl. And I have a pair of the peacock curl here. And I'm going to tie them in by the point. But it's a good idea to take your peacock curl after you get a couple and snip off the very ends because peacock curl depending on where you get it and the quality of them they could be brittle so I'm going to leave my tag the length of the body take that loose loop pull that straight down take the loose loop pull it straight down and then we're going to secure the rest of it going up it doesn't have to be tight turns just to secure it I'm going to put my peacock curl in my material clip there and by the way a material clip can be something as simple as a spring around your vise there now for the hackle I'm going to use I have a saddle hackle this has already been used but it's still about 10 inches long that's a nice thing about saddles now we're gonna use the natural grizzly and I'm going to take that end and we're going to stand them up and we're going to give it the crew cut. And here you go. Sometimes when you try to give it the crew cut, your, your uh, scissor blades push them out of the way. So you can also, you, when you have them st stood up, go this direction on them. And you'll get it nice. And I'm going to leave that. 
I'm going to leave that longer like that. Now when I tie this in, I'm going to leave just one or two of the barbels of the crew cut exposed. So that it's not all the way. Now if you want a tail on there, you can wrap it so that you don't have any barbels exposed. And then when you start to wrap, you're going to get a couple of them sticking out towards the back. But the Griffith's net doesn't have a tail. So we're going to leave a couple of those uh, crew cut barbels exposed there. We're going to secure this. Now the way that I tie the Griffith's net is a little bit different than what the traditional is. If you look in the books, everything, if you do research on a Griffith's net, they don't even make them in size 14. Size 16 is usually the biggest that they that are made. You definitely won't be able to buy any from a fly shop that are size 14s. Now that I have that wrapped in, what I'm going to do since the peacock hurl is brittle, I'm going to take a little bit of head cement and I'm going to put some head cement on the hook shank. Then we're going to take the peacock curl and we're going to wrap them both at the same time. And depending on the quality of your peacock curl, you'll get you might get a, a, a thicker uh, body. Some of them you'll get a skinnier body, but they all work. We're just wrapping one wrap right to right next to the, the previous. And we're going to bring that right up close to the eye. Nope, let me back that one off just a little bit. I want to get that a little bit closer. And then we're going to tie that off. Give that a couple of wraps, two, three wraps. Then I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to wrap on top of it. And I want to end up a, almost an eye length from the eye of the hook. Then I'm going to take my poke and snip and poke and snip those off. And now I have enough of this for a, a second one. Now I'm going to take my uh, hackle and you can see there that one or two of those barbs are still exposed and being that there's one or two barbs are exposed on my first wrap I'm not going to have any hackle shooting towards the rear so I'm going to make almost a complete wrap right at the back we have a nice 90 degree so then we got one two three wraps is all you need to get to the front and when we're at the front, we're going to tie this off. Hold your hackle at a 90 degree. Now, still holding it at a 90 degree, even pulling it back just slightly. I'm going to put a wrap, couple of wraps in front just to trap it in place. And then I'm going to take my poke and snip. And I'm going to remove that. And now this hackle, I could probably still get about a dozen flies off of that one hackle. Now because of the Griffith's gnat and you have all of this hackle there, I usually don't use my whip finish on these. I'll, I'll take my half hitch tool, the back side of the bodkin, put it on there once, twice, Roll it as you go up. Put the eye inside the bodkin or the half hitch tool and pull it. And do that maybe three times. Once, twice. And one more time. Once, twice. Roll it. And by rolling it, you're keeping the tension on there. Especially on the first one, you need to keep that tension. We slide it off. No. I didn't catch any uh, hackle barbels and 
made them stick out front. Take my poke and snip again. Remove that thread. I'm going to clean my hackle brush off really well. And that trimmed point comes real in handy with that to get around that hackle. Now here we have a size 14 Griffiths Nat. And believe me, I have caught many, many hundreds of large 20 inch plus trout on this fly right here. And uh, you could make different variations of this. This isn't the best dry fly quality hackle. You can see it's almost all web. But here is an olive grizzly. And I really like the olive grizzly. I may like the olive grizzly even more than the natural grizzly. But you still do the same thing. Your, your hackle can be a little bit large. Like this is a 14. So this could be a 13 to a 12 size hackle. Just a little bit larger. And less wraps. Now what this really does is this this here it just gives the impression of some kind of a insect that is struggling in the surface and the most vulnerable uh, point for and for a aquatic insect is in the surface when they're trying to get out of break through the film to get to the to the air side of the surface film and they just recognize this as a like I said as that struggling insect and they just gobble them right up whenever you uh, can't quite match it go ahead and uh, put on a Griffiths that and don't be afraid to put on larger ones 14 is my favorite size but also tie these with different color grizzly hackle and olive I tie it with a grizzly brown you can make a sulfur gnat by using sulfur colored dubbing for the body and then a cream colored hackle for the hackle and that's another great fly during the uh, sulfur hatch but you could probably match just about any particular uh, hatch with these. So I hope that you'll learn something from this video. I hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors and let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase this or any of the flies that I make, go to Etsy dot com slash shop slash the fly man gym and if you don't see the particular fly you want uh just let me know and we'll figure it out and most of all i thank you very much for watching my videos